recognize Ms. Chu of California. Um, children living in poverty endure lifelong adverse impacts on their childhood development and are at risk for poor outcomes in health, developmental delays, and lower academic achievement. In my home state of California, despite having the sixth largest economy in the world, one in five children are living in poverty. That's nearly two million children. That means children struggling to learn because they have hungry bellies or who aren't getting the rest they need because they do not have a safe place to sleep every night. Unfortunately, income thresholds used to measure poverty in the United States remain much too low. So many households with children with incomes that greatly exceed the poverty line still experience significant financial insecurity and hardship. And that's why the supplemental poverty measure takes into account expenses like taxes, childcare, and out-of-pocket medical costs, and also accounts for benefits that reduce poverty like Social Security and the Earned Income Tax Credit. Of course, let us be clear, these measures remain at the level of recommendations by the National Academy of Science and are not what the title of this hearing says, that the Biden administration plans to redraw, redraw poverty lines, which is actually untrue. So Ms. Mogg, uh, can you tell us why the SPM is important for policymakers, how it's used? Can you describe how it's data better reflects the lived experiences of families with children? And does its conclusion align with other surveys' findings of increased material hardship over the past year? The official poverty measure essentially asks you, how much resources do you have before the government gets involved? The supplemental poverty measure gives you credit for everything you did on the governmental side. So when we see um, the supplemental poverty measure gives you credit for the expanded child tax credit. So we see poverty decline. We don't see that in the official poverty measure, even though we know all this money went into households because it's not sensitive to tax payments. <clears throat> Supplemental poverty accounts for the different costs of living and allows us to better understand whether people are able to meet their needs. And how is it used? It's used merely as a gauge of how well our government programs are doing. That's why the National Academy panel recommended we talk about it instead of just the official poverty measure. So it's a supplemental way of talking about the experiences of children. That's correct. Uh, Ms. Mogg, it's clear that the best way to fight poverty is not to undermine independent data and research, but to learn from its findings and to do what Democrats on this committee throughout Congress and in the White House uh, uh, have been fighting for, that, which is restoring the expanded CTC. I also want to repeat that every one of us, Republicans and Democrats, have constituents who rely on this support. And they include people like Daisy, my constituent, who is a teacher in Pasadena and used the monthly CTC to support her young son, finally give him uh, a comfortable way to live and rebuild her savings. So, Ms. Mogg, can you talk about why direct cash report is, uh, support is so effective at reducing poverty. What did families typically buy with their CTC checks? And how do these benefits show up in the long-term outcomes for children who are lifted out of poverty because of benefits like the CTC? Parents know what's best for their children, and so they're able to direct the resources in ways that are most efficient and productive I come from Kansas. It's hard to get to work because of transportation systems. It's easy to find child care. Here in DC, child care is very expensive. And so when you give people a cash benefit, they're able to use the resource most wisely. The result is we saw improved health care. We saw um, reduced debt. We saw people making investments in their children and tutoring, saving for college, buying nutritious meals. It was sort of a whole lifetime of benefits depending on what your child needed. And let me say, I'm a big proponent of expanding another powerful tool, tool the in earned income tax credit, and expanding the age at which you qualify for it. Can you talk about uh, how this credit would work with CTC to help both families and workers not raising children? Yeah, the CTC, of course, is concentrated in households with children. The earned income tax credit has a very small component for workers without qualifying children. By expanding that, you essentially pick up a lot of low-wage workers. It's particularly powerful in rural communities, as well as in um, black and Hispanic households. 
Thank you. I yield back.